The podcast industry is exploding. Recently, Spotify signed Joe Rogan to a deal worth over $100 million. And when that deal happened, a lot of people thought that, well, it's Joe Rogan, so that's kind of just an outlier. That's not gonna happen again. Well, it wasn't too long after that Alex Cooper ended up signing a deal for $60 million. And it's my belief that these trends are gonna continue to happen even for smaller creators. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you my number one secret for how you can start a podcast today and get ranked in the top 20. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan Pineda. I'm a real estate investor and entrepreneur here in Vegas. I have flipped hundreds of homes, I've bought hundreds of rentals, and I own multiple businesses doing millions a year in profit. If you wanna learn about how those businesses can help you, you can get a free consultation at ryanpineda.com. Now let me start off by saying that podcasts are my favorite form of content to not only consume, but to also make. I like consuming it because I get to dive deep into an idea, and I love hearing different people's perspectives, and usually, it's a lot more raw and you get a lot more transparency. When you watch a TikTok or a YouTube, typically they're a lot more fast paced. They gotta leave a lot of things out in order to keep the viewer engaged. So I think that the content is much better overall when you're listening to a podcast trying to learn something new. But as a creator, I like making podcasts better because there's way less prep work on my end. I get to just bring in a really cool guest and then freestyle with them and figure out what kind of cool things they're doing to be successful and what kind of questions I personally want the answer to so that I can apply them to my life. For me, it's way easier to go make an hour long podcast with somebody than to do a video like this where I've got to script it out and make everything very detailed, bullet point by bullet point. If you go on TikTok or Instagram, you'll notice that almost all of my content is repurposed from my podcast. My editors are going through the podcast, listening for the best nuggets, and they're just putting them out there on TikTok. And just doing that for the last year has got me to almost a million followers on TikTok. So if you get good at making a podcast, you can also grow your other platforms as well. But anyways, after talking about what Joe Rogan did, after talking about how I do it, Hopefully you agree that a podcast is a great way to create content and it's a great way to build your brand and build value for your audience. Now let's talk about how to do it step by step. The very first thing you gotta do when you decide that you wanna start podcasting is pick a niche. For your niche, you gotta think about a few things. Number one, is there an audience for the niche? How big is the range? Number two, why should you be talking about the niche? Why would anyone wanna to listen to you about it? And number three, do you enjoy talking about that topic? Because you're gonna to have to talk about it a lot if you're making a lot of content. For example, when I started to think about my niche for the podcast, there was a lot of different ways I could go. I could talk about real estate, could talk about just general business, I could talk about creating content and YouTube and stuff like that. And there are many podcasts that just service those different industries. But I realized that I would get really bored only talking about that Plus, the audience size for those specific niches are pretty small if you're only focused on just one little thing. And for me, I wanna have a really big brand where it can reach a lot of different people, not just one little small niche. And so I decided my podcast was gonna be about general entrepreneurship. We're gonna talk about building businesses, we're gonna talk about different investing strategies, how to use social media to build your business, and all of this just falls under the general entrepreneurship category. Now, it just so happens we do talk a lot about real estate because I know so many real estate people and many of them wanna be guests on the podcast, but, it is by no means a real estate only specific podcast. And I like it that way because I would get tired of just talking about real estate all day. I have many other interests. But for you, you gotta think about this. It is easier to stand out when you do niche down. So I'm not saying that what I did is the right way by any means. I actually think that by niching down and picking something very unique, you're gonna get a smaller fan base, but they're gonna be much more loyal and dedicated because there's no one else servicing them. So I would just pick a niche that you have something to contribute to that you can add value, something that you can talk about a lot because you're gonna be making a lot of podcasts in that niche, and something that you have an audience for. Now beyond niche, you gotta also think about the format of the podcast. So are you going to interview guests? Are you going to do it solo? How long is the podcast going to be? You wanna figure out how to create a format that is consistent for your audience. You can't just one minute have a 10 minute podcast and then the other one is two hours. Your audience gets confused, they don't know what to expect. So you gotta make sure that you're consistent with the format. For me, I decided that I enjoy listening to hour long podcasts. I also enjoy listening to different guest speakers. And so for that reason, that's the style of podcast that I'm gonna run with my channel. And it works out great for me because a lot of my guests don't wanna talk for two hours, nor do I. So you'll never see my interviews be super long. But on the other hand, I don't want my interviews to only be 20 minutes. 
If I have somebody fly all the way in from Las Vegas, I don't want them to just come here for 20 minutes of content and that'd be it. I wanna get a good chunk of time with them and I wanna be able to pick their brain and get good value for the audience, for myself, and then be able to pull some clips from it to go throw on TikTok and Instagram. So the format you pick is very important, but you don't have to interview guests if you don't want to. There is a lot of work that goes into recruiting and finding good guests. Thankfully for me, people want to be on my show because it has a pretty big audience, so I don't have to go recruit, but if you're just starting out, you're gonna be constantly trying to reach out to bigger name guests so that you can grow your podcast. The last thing you gotta think about with a podcast is do you wanna have a co-host? Do you wanna have somebody who's good at asking the tough questions and somebody who's there for comedic relief? I would just say that if you are gonna have a co-host, make sure you got different types of personalities so you both are bringing different flavors to the podcast. If you both are the same exact person, it's kind of boring for the viewer. So don't just go partner up with your buddy because you guys are buddies. Make sure that you guys both bring something unique to the table. The second thing you gotta do is get a good name and a podcast cover. So I've talked about this a lot. In YouTube, the most important thing you can do to get views is have a good thumbnail and a good title, right? The content itself doesn't matter if no one ever clicks on it. The same thing applies to a podcast. If they've never heard of you before, the very first thing they're gonna look at is your podcast cover. How does it look? Is it something that I wanna click on? And what's the name? Does the name tell me anything about what this podcast has? I've never heard it. I need to make sure that if I'm gonna click on this, it's relevant to me as a viewer. So this is where I also differ again from what I did versus what I would tell you to do. For me, I picked the name The Ryan Pineda Show. And it's worked out great for me because people know my name from the other platforms. I've got a pretty big following across everything else outside a podcast. And so if they search Ryan Pineda, then they're gonna find my show. But if I was brand new and no one knew me, I don't think picking your name is something that you should do. I would pick a name that is relevant to your niche so that people realize that, oh, this podcast is about real estate, or this podcast is about working out. Whatever the podcast is about, I would make the title very captivating so that people knew exactly what they were gonna listen to. So unless you're already famous, do not use your name. Now that doesn't mean you can't have your name in the podcast cover. You can definitely have your face on the cover, you can have your name at the bottom, but it's not the title of the podcast. And also speaking about the cover, make sure that it stands out and it looks really good. I don't think you're gonna get a very good podcast cover on Fiverr for 20 bucks. You wanna spend some time and some effort getting somebody who's really good at creating covers so that if somebody's just scrolling through it, they see, oh, this looks really good. This is professional, this is different. And by looking at the cover, they can tell what the podcast is about. If you're doing a real estate podcast, I would definitely have a house in the cover or something just to show that this is about my niche. The next thing you're gonna have to do is get the right equipment. So the most important thing with podcast is audio. You gotta make sure that you have really good mics. There are a lot of great mics you can get. We use a brand called Sure. It's one of the higher end ones. I don't think you have to go that route. You can go get a Rode mic, which is very good. You can also get the Rode Podcaster, which is a thing that allows you to switch the volumes and other stuff. I'm not a big tech guy, so I can't even tell you how it works. But uh, if you're gonna go serious with podcasts, the Rode Podcaster is a great thing to get. Also, you're gonna need a camera. You should be filming every single podcast. Do not make the mistake of going audio only. That is a huge mistake. It doesn't allow you to repurpose the clips. Also, you're not gonna be able to put it on YouTube and other platforms where people could watch it and you can make even more money and get more eyeballs. So make sure you film all of your podcast. You can go get any camera you want. One I highly recommend for beginners is the Sony a6400. I still use that camera to this day. It's been great. I think they're around like 700 bucks or something. So definitely go check that out. Now that I'm naming all this equipment, I feel like I should go get affiliate codes for Amazon, but whatever, I don't really care. Just go buy it on Amazon. And then lastly, when it comes to equipment, make sure that you get a good set. So you can see me, I am on set here right now for my podcast, The Ryan Pineda Show. And this is where we film it every time. I had my friend custom make this table. Can't really see it um, right now in this view. We can B-roll some of it for you right now. But uh, it just shows you like how nice the set is, that we're professional. And uh, it's something that I really enjoy and it's a great set. But you don't have to go splurge all out for a set like I did. You're perfectly fine doing it at your house and just getting a nice backdrop. Everyone's got some kind of nice backdrop at your house. Just make sure that it's somewhere where you don't have a lot of echo and that you're not gonna have any distractions. Now, once you've got all that and you're getting ready to launch, this is the biggest secret that people screw up that I do not want you to make the mistake on. 
you need to launch with multiple episodes. So one of the biggest things that I did was launch with 10 episodes all at once. And the reason I did that is because it helps the algorithm. If you launch with only one episode and all of your friends go and watch it, you're gonna get a certain amount of downloads and views for that one episode. But if you launch with 10, they can now binge watch you just like Netflix, and it's gonna send a signal to the algorithm that says, oh man, like this guy just launched and he's already got 10 times the download as somebody who only launches with one episode. And in turn, that's gonna help you rank high. This is the exact strategy that I used when I launched the podcast. I also did a giveaway on top of that and said, hey, if you go and subscribe to my podcast and you leave me a review, I'm gonna go pick a bunch of winners. I'm giving away cash, I'm giving away courses, t-shirts, all that stuff. And guess what happened? I got over a thousand five-star reviews I launched in the top 20 of business overall. It was absolutely crazy. For a few days, I was above Gary Vee and all these big guys for my podcast ranking. And in turn, Apple Podcasts saw that and said, okay, this guy's legit. We're gonna go push his stuff throughout the year because people who've launched this big are usually gonna continue to do it. And we want people to listen to podcasts on our platform. So that was the biggest thing I did for launch and that's the number one thing I say for you guys to do if you're gonna launch. Make sure you have a lot of episodes and do something for your followers so they're incentivized to go listen, to go subscribe, and to leave you a five-star review. The other thing I'll say is after you do that and you launch, make sure you're consistent and make sure that you're adjusting your message as you go along. I see too many people that do a big launch and then all of a sudden they're not consistent with the podcast. Their fans don't know when the next one's gonna be. You should be releasing your podcast every day at the same time, whether it's one time a week, whether it's one time a month, like, I don't know, one time a month isn't gonna be good. But my point is, make sure you're consistent. They know what time it's going, they know how often it's going, and what day it's going. Also, make sure you're repurposing the content on the other platforms. If you've already spent an hour filming, I'm sure you said something smart that's gonna get people interested in what you're doing. Just take those clips and go throw them on TikTok, throw them on Instagram, throw them on YouTube Shorts. And in turn, it's gonna redirect people to your podcast and give it a better chance to be found. If you're seeing your statistics go down on a certain topic or when you do things a certain way, but you see them going up when you are doing something different or you're interviewing this type of guest, start getting more of that guest or more of that content. Do what works. So once you have enough data, you're gonna have to start studying your numbers so that you can be more successful. Also, I should have probably mentioned this at the beginning, but if you're still here, I appreciate you. And if you are serious about doing a podcast and building your personal brand and your social media following, I actually have my social media academy that details everything I just said about podcast, but also everything I know about building a TikTok, an Instagram, a YouTube channel, so that you can build your personal brand, make money for your business, or just make money as a content creator and have that be as a career. And because you've made it to the end of this video, I'll give you a special offer of 30% off that course. So I'll link to that down below in the description with that promo code. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it gave you value. Get out there and go make a podcast. I think it is a huge industry that is going to continue growing as time goes along. So thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Peace.